Hey there, today I wanna to talk about getting Napa cabbages or any kind of cabbage really to form the cabbage head. I don't know if you've ever tried growing cabbages. I've been trying for years and so many times when I grow them or plant them in the garden, they never quite turn out the way I was hoping. So I'll end up with a lot of leaves, but not necessarily that nice tight head full of lots of great leaves. So this year I'm growing Napa cabbages here in my front two beds. I have about 20 plants planted all together. Seems like a lot, I know, but I love Asian food. I lived in China for two years out of college. And if I could have stir fried Napa cabbage every day, I think I'd be a happy, happier person. I'm already happy, but I'd be even more happy. So um, today I wanna to show you a few things that I'm doing to make sure that I get heads formed on this cabbage. So I get tons of nice leafy greens on the inside um, of these plants. Now, one of the things I love about Napa cabbages is one, you can plant them out earlier. So these, I started indoors from seed under lights, and then I transplanted them out into the garden a little bit over a month ago, or actually right at a month ago. And you can see they're filling out and growing really well um, in about four weeks time. But Napa cabbages are supposedly able to form a head within 50 to 60 days after transplant. So if I'm already almost 30 days in, I'm like, hey, let's hurry up already. Um, so I'm gonna do a few steps with these cabbages to see if I can speed up the formation of the head. Now, something to keep in mind is cabbages are in um, the brassica family. Brassicaei is how you say it if you speak Latin. And um, they love the cool season, so they do not love growing um, when it's hot. So generally, if temperatures start to get over 80 consistently, these guys will, or these ladies, will stop growing or they'll start to bolt and go to flower. So we've got, usually in most places, you have like this little window of the time when they love the weather and then they just don't. So you kinda, time is of the essence, you know what I'm saying? So that could be one reason why your cabbages don't form heads is either it's too cold, um, like below 45 regularly, or it's too hot above 80, 85 regularly. So if you're in that temperature range between 45 and 85 for your high, um, then you should be good to go, but you need about 60 days worth of time for them to grow in the garden where it's gonna stay that way. Now you can change the weather by like using a frost cloth or using a shade cloth, um, but if you're just growing out in the elements then you gotta work with what you got. So that's the first thing to keep in mind is temperature. Next thing to keep in mind is water. So a lot of times the reason why these guys, these ladies don't form into cabbage heads is because they're not being properly watered. So water is so important for all lettuces really, but especially for cabbage heads. So you don't wanna overwater, but you want the ground to stay moist underneath these plants. Most lettuce plants are like 70, 75% water just in their makeup and all that growth, all that cellular growth inside the center of these plants requires a lot of water. So you really wanna make sure that you're watering on the regular. And then another thing that you um, wanna pay attention to is not having too much nitrogen in your soil. So generally, if you have a nitrogen rich soil, then you're gonna get lots of leaves, but not necessarily the formation of the head. So today we're gonna to actually even fertilize with a little bit of a phosphorus rich fertilizer. So the idea here is pushing more phosphorus into these plants, into their roots, rather than nitrogen, so that the focus is more on forming that nice head rather than just giving you all these greens. Now don't get me wrong, you can still eat all these greens. So all this is edible, but I just want that nice, compact, really tight leaf growth. So what I'm gonna do first is, um, is prune. So I'm gonna actually prune these larger leaves that are on the outside. Those are the oldest leaves, and I know that these are not really going to be part of the cabbage head because they've already kind of flowered and pushed out. And you know me, I love to pack in the plants, so I know also that pruning these back will mean that there's more room in the garden for other things. So I'll just start on one of these plants. I just have some needle nose pruners here, and I'm literally gonna go right to the base of the plant. Now, all these are edible leaves, so I'm not gonna toss any of these. I'm gonna eat them, um, but I'm just gonna prune them back 
so that um, the plants are going to focus more on the heading. Okay, hold on one second. Stay right here. I'll be right back. I'm going to get a little bowl. I'm back. All right, so we're going to, I wanted to make sure I didn't get these leaves dirty because um, I want to eat them. I'm going to make myself a little, um, a little wrap with these later. I don't mean like the, you know, like a music wrap. Okay, so I'm going to go in and cut these large leaves all around the exterior of the plant. And anytime you prune a plant, what you're doing is you're telling the plant where to direct its focus. So when I'm pruning these leaves, what I'm doing is telling the plant, you don't have to support, you, what you can see here even with these plants, right, is that they're spending a lot of their time and energy on enlarging these leaves. And I want them to put their energy on growing a tight head rather than large exterior leaves. So I'm just gonna keep harvesting and pruning. It's kind of double duty here, you know what I'm saying? So I'm pruning and I'm harvesting simultaneously, which is so awesome. Um, this one has had a little bit less growth. So that's the first step. We talked about water and temperature and nutrients. Um, but this is where you can kind of come in beyond those things and you get to play a more directive role as the gardener where you get to really tell the plants what you want them to do um, by pruning away the things that you don't want so much of. So real quickly, I've pruned all these away and you can see already, right, that I've opened up a lot of space in between these plants. And you can see as I open this up that I have a lot of things planted in here, right? So I have some spinaches that I sowed in between, hoping that I could get a spinach harvest while I'm waiting on the cabbage harvest. Now, I don't know if you can see this with the video, but there's this moth here, this white moth. That is actually gonna lay pests <laughs> in the cabbage. So that brings me to the idea of pest pressure. So that, that little moth is looking for a place to lay its eggs so that it can make tons of caterpillar babies. And those caterpillar babies love um, eating these leaves. So you can see the holes here. This is from a caterpillar, probably laid by that mama or one of her sisters or friends or something. Okay, so I have pruned these back. I've told the plant I loved those leaves. They are beautiful. I am gonna eat them up, but I don't want any more of those kind of leaves. Now what I want are leaves that are on the interior. So all lettuce plants, all brassica plants, they push their newest growth from the heart and center of the plant. So you can see all these tiny little leaves, I can see just from my fingers, I can probably see, you know, five little leaves all inside of there forming. And we want hundreds of little leaves forming in there to get this nice tight head. So when we cut back those edge leaves, we're literally going to tell the plant, put all your energy into making a lot more new leaves rather than growing those big leaves bigger. All right, so once I've done that step, now I'm going to fertilize a little bit. So I just have some water in my little um, cute little watering can. And I'm gonna use a, um, this is a organic Neptune fish and seaweed fertilizer. So when you look at the numbers here, we've got two, three, one. I probably would even prefer that first number to be even smaller. The first number is for nitrogen, which we do not want much nitrogen. The second number is for phosphorus. That's what we want a lot of. And then the third is for potassium. So it stands for NPK. Um, the potassium wouldn't hurt either. Potassium is going to give the plant nice deep root growth, which will help. Now, the mixture is just to use, um, they say for outdoor plants, use one eighth cup per gallon of water. Well, I clearly don't have a gallon here. I've got just a little bit. So I'm literally just gonna put a little dash of this into, oh, see that bad guy, that girl, what is she doing? So I'm just gonna put a little bit of this into my can. And this stuff is pretty, um, it's, it's pretty strong, I should say. So I'm gonna put it in there and mix it up. 
And then I'm just gonna pour it around the base of each of these plants. So I'm just gonna swish it around. And I'm just gonna come in here and just um, pour it in right around, I don't mean to get it on the leaves. We're gonna pour it in right around the base of each plant, just like that. So you wouldn't wanna do this too often, maybe once a week, but you do wanna be watering quite often. Like I said, the cabbages need to stay well hydrated to be forming heads. But those are just a few steps that you can take that I'm gonna take this season to see if I can get some beautiful Napa cabbage heads um, for my kitchen garden, my spring kitchen garden. So just remembering timing is everything. You wanna make sure that you're growing them in the right seasons. They're brassica plants, so they like to be you know, warmer than about 40 degrees Fahrenheit and cooler than 80, 85. You wanna make sure you've got a phosphorus rich soil that you're fertilizing with phosphorus, not nitrogen. You want to um, make sure they have enough space and enough water. And then you also want to prune fairly regularly so that you get less large leaves and more growth in the center. So stay tuned, we'll be keeping you posted on everything that happens to my little Napa cabbages. Hopefully a few weeks from now, I'll be doing my first big harvest. I can't wait to share that with you. If you would love to grow your own salad garden with cabbages and lettuces and all the other things, we have fantastic resources all about growing salad and you can find them right below this video. So check those out. I have actually an entire course called Salad Garden School where I teach you the step-by-step -step to grow your own greens. So stay tuned for my Napa cabbages and now you get out there and grow some cabbages yourself. I'll see you next time.